you have to make that decision not to overserve. Refusing service isn't personal, it's the law. We know it's not easy, but we're counting on you to keep us all safe. Thank you, servers, for doing the tough job. It's that time of the year again. Santa and Mrs. Claus drop by for their annual visit to Rogers TV. You can ask Santa for what you want for Christmas by calling the direct line to Santa Tuesday, December 15th, 6 to 8 p.m. Call early because everyone wants to talk to Santa. The direct line to Santa, Tuesday, December 15th, 6 to 8 p.m., only on Rogers TV. The lift wasn't working and he was in pain, so I tried to lift him on my own. Yes, it's bad. I'll need help. Can I help you with that? No, I'm good. Thanks. Workplace injuries hurt the most at home. I joined because I wanted to help others. To be a part of something bigger. To show my kids what's important. I joined to make my community stronger. To make a difference in someone's life. To acknowledge that our freedoms come at a cost. I joined to honor my mom. My grandpa. My neighbor. Everyone who served. Who are serving still. I joined. I joined. I joined the Legion. Everybody, how are you doing? It's your boy DC hanging out tonight for another episode of Out of the Fog, a local matters bop. Who's on tonight? Author and advocate Gemma Hickey, Lisa Brown for Stella Circle, and of course, David Burroughs talking about his evolution of service. It's Out of the Fog. We'll be right back. This is Rogers TV. My wife, I want her to learn from you. Beautiful. It pleases me you've struck up a friendship together. I don't want to go back to the life I had before you. If you're Cinderella, come meet your Prince Charming. I thought I could come in and sweep you off your feet. Yes! Uh, uh, but you swept me off mine. I think I'm pretty good at this now. Oh. This is Rogers TV. Welcome back, everybody. It is Out of the Fog, and I'm so excited to be hanging out with Gemma Hickey here tonight. What are you at, anyway? <laughs> what else is there to be at? I mean, how are you? Uh, well, listen, thank you so much. It's my pleasure. Jeez, busy old schedule on the go, making some time uh, for me. You know, got to, boy. Feeling blessed. Dies for you. Dies, I dies back. <laughs> I want to jump right in. Yeah, let's do it. When I found out the news about your overseas a little piece of news, I was like, whoa. So why don't you tell everyone viewing at home about the latest in the adventures of Gemma? Well, I am just so thrilled that my book is resonating with so many people, mm -hmm. and now it's gonna be published in Japan in 2021. So I'm really, really excited about that. It's won three awards, um, it's gotten rave reviews, um, and so the sales have been great, and uh, I've decided that in the first year I'm donating my half my royalties to Pathways. So I'm really, really happy at uh, the support. Any any kind of word out positive about the book, you know, helps with sales, obviously. Of course, so, of course. Uh, that just makes me happy. Well, I'm sure with the, the more money you make, the more good that you get to do, that's a full circle situation. Well, it's been a dream of mine to be a writer since I was a little kid. And uh, it's my first book. I've been published in other types of anthologies and things like that before. Right. But um, I'm just so, I don't even think I've let it all, it's not really sunk in yet, you know? Um, and this month, I just found out that it's up, uh, it's been shortlisted for Newfoundland Labrador Reads through the public libraries, and it's uh, up for the uh, Alumni uh, Book Club at Memorial University, so I'm really, really, really excited about that. Uh, whenever I get to sit across from folks who had a dream, and then life happens and destiny takes hold and then it comes true, there's an energy and a frequency 
Uh, that to me is like a drug, honestly. Wow. Well, yeah. And you are radiating it. Did you think two years ago, three years ago, when you're planked down writing and piecing it all together as authors do, where they're trying to create something of meaning to themselves, let alone others, that you'd be where you are with all the recognition? You know what, I just wanted to put the book out and I had hoped that people would like it and enjoy it. I didn't realize that people would be coming up to me at the supermarket and you know, quoting the book and telling me that I made them laugh and cry and all of these things. Um, I just really wanted, uh, you know, it's a memoir, so I want it to be as genuine as possible. And, you know, it, it really, I was writing the book in my head as I was walking across Newfoundland. And my walk across Newfoundland in July of 2015 is the narrative framework for the book, but it really goes between past and present mm -hmm. and uh, memories of childhood and, and all of the things that really, you know, inform my identity through the years. Um, and what a topic, because if someone ever said, oh, yeah, you know, if your name ever came up, ever since we met years ago, I would say they live out loud. Mm -hmm. And what I mean by that is like so many of us have our experiences and our evolutions and we don't demand the celebration of the highs and the lows the way that I feel that you and very precious few people in my life have. Mm. It's very inspiring for so many folks. Well, I hope so. I, I hope that if I could do something positive with um, things that have happened to me in my life that have been negative, mm. and I want to do that. You know, that helps me heal as well. Yeah. And so um, it's really, really wonderful to hear people, uh, their stories about how they're interpreting the book, and really there's something in there for everyone. It's not just about someone who's transgender. It's not just about someone who's growing up in Newfoundland, Labrador. It's about a bunch of different things. And so I love the fact that it's it's reaching a wide variety of people and, and now in other parts of the world. So I'm really excited about that. Well, we've been teasing them long enough. Talk about where you got the inspiration for the name of the book. Well, uh, that's interesting. I do comment on it in the book itself. Um, but I was out walking and a coyote, coyote came up to me when I was um, going through Tiranova Park and I was sitting on a, um, a rail guard eating a protein bar, taking a few minutes break. <laughs> and uh, I didn't look appetizing enough, I suppose, because <laughs> it looked at me, I looked back and it just walked on, walked on by. <laughs> And so I joked with myself and said, I'm almost feral um, <laughs> because I hadn't had a haircut in a while. I mean, well, I was hairy all over my legs. I had, you know, I mean, I was just, I looked like a bear and I probably smelled like one too. <laughs> um, but really symbolically, I guess, when you don't really fit into any particular car category, how, do you, how are you categorized, hmm. you know? So it's kind of like being in the, in the you know, walking through the landscape of, of forest and, and you know, just kind of experiencing that. And also, you know, where do you fit in in society when you don't belong to a particular category? You're kind of wild. So I, I suppose in, in some ways that was where the, the title came from. Um, I think that the, uh, one of the many pieces that come out from you um, that hit headlines and made impact, and I thought about it leading into hanging out today, um, the non-binary. Mm and forcing that reality for you, but for so many um, who are now able to walk after you. Mm -hmm. Just another way of living out loud. Well, you know, I just hope that young people out there who are struggling with gender um, can take something from my story. Um, you can be what you wanna be, you can do what you wanna do. And, and um, you know, the moment I used my trauma as wings instead of chains was the moment that I knew that the sky was the limit. You know, and I hope that that reaches as many people as possible because, um, you know, life is full of endless possibilities, and um, we don't have to to be fixed in any one type of way. We can just be because we're all human, and on that level, we can relate. You know, this is where we would slow motion embrace <laughs> to some <laughs> '80s hair metal ballad, <laughs> but COVID. So like, I, I know, right? It's it's uh, killing my soul not to be able to hug you. I know. Mm -hmm. I love you so much. Okay. I want to ask you about the lighter side of life, mm -hmm. living outside the city as you do, up in the wilderness. <laughs> we had a little chat leading in. Yeah. Talk about uh, the adventure of getting in that Atlantic and those ponds and what oh. that does for you. Because I'm scared about it. Listen, I am. I have fully embraced cold water swimming. I swim every day in Torres Cove Pond, um, and I love it. I have been practicing deep breathing, and you know I've been working out and, and lifting weights and trying to get back in shape. Mm -hmm. So uh, that's part of my my weight loss, and and I just love uh, you know being uh, being in the woods and being out in the cold water. It just it's invigorating. I feel like a 
I feel like I can do anything. I love that. When I get out of the water, it's incredible. I'm like toe, <laughs> two toes. You know, our body is adaptable and you can work yourself up to it. Uh, for me, you know, I like being in touch with my body in different ways mm -hmm. and I've undergone serious trauma in my life and, and uh, this is one way, this is a positive stressor for your body. So for me, it's great. That's how I, I wake it. up, have a cup of coffee and I go swim in the pond. I love that. Yeah. Um, maybe I'll come up and we'll tape me trying to follow you into the water and run it as a segment. Anytime. That'd be Anytime. so fun. It would be funny. Um, yeah. Listen, advocate, author, change maker, coolest human. Oh, come Love you. Love you too. Gemma Hickey, Almost Feral. Get the book. Breakwater Books to get your copy. Big things. It's out of the fog. We'll be right back after this break. All right, girls. Uh, Mom, you said it's played again. Workplace injuries hurt the most at home. Being stuck in your home during this pandemic also means you have a home. Waiting in line for groceries means you have money for groceries. The isolation, being broke and totally scared about what's next. I was feeling that before this crisis. People say we're in this together, but me, I've got no one. Youth who have aged out of the child welfare system are in danger of falling further through the cracks because of today's crisis. They need your support. Please give today at helpyouthnow.ca. Welcome back, everybody. Thank you so much for tuning in tonight. Like I mentioned at the top of the show, I have a dynamic group of amazing folks that are gonna be hanging with us tonight. The first is Lisa Brown, how you doing? I'm very well, thank you. Now guys, there's never any pre-filming laughs that go on here when we're getting <laughs> ready for the cameras to roll, that's for sure, so don't ever wonder again if we're having fun or not. So Lisa, this is your third time being on the show. Oh. With me. I think I deserve some sort of prize. I guys. do think yes. so, there's actually a gift behind the chair. In fact, lower down the basket of gifts, here it comes. <laughs> Next show, psych. <laughs> so every time we come on, I walk away uh, from the show feeling very thankful to have someone like you in the chair of such an important organization locally, Stella Circle. Why don't you let people know, tuning in for the first time, some information to help them know more about the organization. Yeah, I'm really proud to be a part of Stella Circle and have been now for almost six years. Mm -hmm. And um, we offer a lot of hope, I think, to many people. And so our mission is to transform lives by offering real homes, real help, and real work. And so that translates into offering housing, counseling, and employment services. And so, um, you know, when we take a look at our vision, I think it's a vision that everybody wants, a home, a job, a community. And so we're all a success when we have all of those three things. Mm. Unfortunately for some people, face more barriers than others, and so it can be a struggle. And so we're very much rooted in social justice, in the concept of recovery, so we very much believe that people can recover from mental illness, from addictions, um, and, and whatever their recovery is, is that's great, and we're there to try and help support that. That's amazing. Mm. Who was Stella? Stella was Stella Burry, and she was a United Church deaconess mm. and a social worker, and she very much believed in the concept of a hand up, not a hand out, mm. and that's still our philosophy. She opened Emmanuel House in 1945, mm. and we still actually operate Emmanuel House a different, in a different way. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a residential counseling program right now. But um, she's very much kind of our, our namesake, but also uh, propels us in terms of our philosophy a lot of times. And so, um, so yeah, so the name really pays homage to her. You have me a deaconess. <laughs> Who wouldn't want to be called a deaconess? Well, Come if on. I had a nickel for every time I heard that term, I'd have a nickel. You know what I mean? It speaks to tra uh, blazing the trail, as you say, yeah. and being ahead of your time and being in the forefront of advocacy and, and pushing forward a topic that back then, I'm sure, 